It is time. I've been watching these tomatoes ripen. I cannot believe that these few plants have so many massive fruits on them, but I better believe it because it is time to harvest. I'm actually carrying the scale in this notebook back to the high tunnel to leave back there because I want to make records of everything that comes out of those two front beds. But first, we're going to pick these and weigh them because they're massive. These three plants are all striped German and right now I've got four really big tomatoes ripening uh, ready to pick and then this one's pretty close but I'm gonna leave it for a little while longer and this one's starting to blush. You can see some color on this plant. Pretty much all of my outside plants have a little bit of that going on now. Um, some of them look pretty good but some are looking just a touch dingy. Pretty normal for this time of year here in the humid south. I feel like it's really difficult to convey just how large these are on camera. They're very, very large. I'm so excited right now. It's so silly. These are massive. They're like, I mean, they're like as big as my face. And there's four of them. They're so huge. All right, I'm gonna start this one. Um, we're just gonna go with ounces. So this one's 21.6 ounces, 0.61 kilograms. 614 grams. I'm going through this so that you guys who are on different measurements. So 21.6. This one feels heavier. 24.4. I really thought that these were close to two pounds. 22.7 ounces. And the last one, I don't think this is the heaviest one. 22.8 all right so this was the heaviest one 24.4 ounces one and a half pounds that's still a pretty big tomato all right so I'm not gonna be disappointed about that I really did think that this was a two pound tomato it's actually only one and a half pounds still a really large tomato um, and together here we're looking at close to six pounds of tomato <laughs> that's a lot i'm feeling pretty good about it and i'm thinking that one of these deserves to be my first tomato sandwich of the year the largest tomato that i've ever grown was just right over two pounds um i've never had any that were like three pounds or anything like that i've seen them where people have had them but i personally two pound tomato is my is my uh, record. I don't know what you do to try to encourage large fruits. I'm assuming, I mean, just making sure your plants are well fertilized, that that helps. But I think last year I harvested, I mean, dozens and dozens of tomatoes that were over 20 ounces. So that's pretty normal. Those are on the bigger side. Totally happy with getting that, it's very exciting. Before I take that scale and notepad back to the back, I'm taking that back there because I saw my first blushing tomato. I'm gonna go ahead and harvest the other ripe tomatoes on this row. We're supposed to have some thunderstorms tomorrow. So I'm gonna pick all the ones that are ripe enough that if I leave them, they might split. That stinks to find. Pretty sure that's because some chickens got into the garden earlier, but that really stinks. Oh, yep. Guilty. Ugh, another one. That little punk. Guys, had they gotten my massive tomatoes that I've been watching for weeks, I think I would have cried. I'm still not happy about this, but at least it wasn't that. Like, I'm not happy with them, but 
It's also kind of my fault. I need to clip their flight feathers so they can't get over the fence anymore. I get asked a lot, like, can't you just let your chickens in your garden to help with the bugs? And I've seen people even suggest like gardening with chickens and stuff like that. And I don't know what is going on in the mind of other people's chickens if you're able to let your chickens in your garden to help with bugs. I know that I've seen where people have created like little tunnel systems where the chickens can go through the rows or people will use a tractor and take the chickens through like rows and walkways. In my experience, chickens are one of the last things that you want in your garden, especially if you have nice colorful low-hanging fruit. I'll never forget the year that I came out one morning and about four hens had gotten through somehow and I came out that day and had to gather up a five gallon bucket full of ripe tomatoes that had those little spots pecked out of them and uh, yeah that's when I questioned if I still like chickens at all. <laughs> Yeah, you're gonna have to go back to your yard, little miss. All right, I got her back in. Got a pretty decent little tomato harvest. This is when it kind of begins on the tomato season, and then uh, this just increasingly grows, which is pretty exciting. I am happy to be at this point. All right, we're gonna leave this up here because it's heavy. We're gonna go back to the high tunnel. All right. The reason I needed my notebook back here is because I knew that this was here. So that one ripe one on the other side, from what I can tell, is the only one. I have quite a few others that I think are probably pretty close to beginning to blush, but just because how long they've been the size they are. So this year I decided to do like a casual experiment just for the sake of my own curiosity. I am admittedly not super scientific. I would like to be, you know, I have a lot of, of curious notions and things that I think I wonder, but I am also doing a lot of things. And so sometimes I'll try out things like this, but uh, I'll end up, you know, making mistakes that make it kind of uneven. So far, I feel pretty good about this experiment though. Each one of these beds have 40 plants in it. All the plants in the bed on the left are hybrids. Most of these plants are jet stars. Uh, I think six of them are better boys because I didn't have enough jet stars to fill the bed. Again, not super scientific. All the plants in the other bed, 40 plants as well, are climbing triple crops, which is an heirloom variety. So I've got a hybrid bed and an heirloom bed. And I really just wanted to compare in the exact same growing conditions, whether these heirlooms, which are meant to be a high production variety or these hybrids, which are meant to be high production varieties, uh, which one would do better in the exact same conditions. I have never grown many hybrid tomatoes, um, just a few. There are a couple like sun sugars and sun golds and a couple like that that I'll buy a started plant of, usually cherry tomatoes, that I can think of. I, I don't remember growing any larger F1 hybrid tomatoes. All of the ones that I've grown have been open pollinated. But I know a lot of people who really stick to the hybrids for their own like canning purposes and they basically say well if I'm gonna grow a bunch of tomatoes for production I want them to be varieties that are going to be really fail proof and I thought well let's put them neck and neck and see which one does better. So I'm actually going to be leaving this scale and this notebook out here in the high tunnel and recording everything that gets picked out of these beds and here is our first little fruit. Okay I had to put it on something level. That seems right. That's about a four ounce tomato. I'm gonna double check these inside. All right, there's my first record. I'm just gonna leave that stuff out here so that I can make sure I have it here when I need to make more notes. Oh, hey, look, surprise. I didn't even see that coming. This is a little Thorburn, Thornburns terracotta. And there's another one that's pretty nearly ripe. Man, I'm gonna have to keep an eye out on all these fruits in the high tunnel. I just didn't think we were there yet, but apparently we are. I, th I was expecting the hybrids to go a little early, but pretty cool. Oh wow, I just went to look at one of these peppers and it fell off in my hand. That's my first jalapeno to harvest this year. 
it just jumped off into my hand. I'm not planning on weighing any of my other harvests this year. Uh, so much of my gardening is done kind of as I can with the help of kids. So trying to keep up with stuff like that, it's, it's stressful for me. And I don't garden for it to be stressful. So I'm not gonna do a lot of weighing stuff. Uh, sometimes I'll like weigh, a, I'll harvest a bunch of something and I'll go in and weigh it just to see for myself. But as far as like keeping up with it and trying to get a total, I'm not gonna do that. But I am gonna do my very best to keep up with these tomatoes in these two beds. And I've really tried to make sure that I like took care of them the same. I actually had one plant get decapitated in one bed and I was like, man, now it's gonna be uneven. And then actually a plant in the other bed also ended up getting topped. And so I just, I ended up pulling both of those out um, just to keep it even. I can't believe that parts of the garden are already winding down and dying back. I knew this was coming. I knew it was only a matter of time before much of the squash tapped out. The sweet potatoes though are trying to sit on my sitting stump. It is very very hot right now it's like 90 or so and it's eight o'clock in the evening so i wanted to talk to you guys about something here from my sit and stump i almost hate to tack this on at the end of the vlog because i do think that it's important and i think it bears repeating so i think we'll probably end up back on this topic but it's july it's getting pretty warm in some places now some of you are just now gearing up and your garden is just starting to produce something. Uh, so this probably doesn't apply to you just yet. Uh, for some of you, this pep talk won't be needed for another month or so. For a lot of people, especially people who live in places where you've been gardening uh, for a few months now, and you've been pulling in harvest, maybe even to the point that it's overwhelming and it's starting to get really hot, the bugs are starting to get really bad, the weeds are starting to get really bad. And this comes the time of year where it's really easy to just throw your hands up at your garden. And uh, sometimes it is true that it gets to the point that it just gets kind of wild and you sort of just gotta roll with it and get what you can. And only you can really decide if that's a place where you are. I, I was thinking about this today because I was driving into town. I notice gardens. I'm like, I joke about how I rubberneck on gardens. And just anywhere that I go and any route that I regularly drive, I can tell you like how a person gardens because I'll take note of it uh, when I pass by regularly. And there's this one place that I've noticed every single year they till a pretty good sized garden. Every single year they plant that garden full of stuff and every single year by the beginning of July it's waist high in weeds and I am not judging these people by any means in fact I commend their optimism I mean for like six years this has been going on like every single year it goes the exact same and I think man they put in a lot of work every year and then it ends up getting away from them and that takes, that takes a, a measure of hope to be like, this is the year that we're gonna do it. I've noticed that that's kind of a trend. I've noticed in all, all the gardens that I pass by and a lot of the people that I talk to is that they're really, really eager and excited as they're planning through winter and when they're getting it in in the spring. But this is the time of year where the garden just really easily kicks a gardener's butt and it can become really discouraging. This is the time that people take on the identity of having like a black thumb and being a bad grower and saying, I can't garden, I'm not good at it. And I wanna encourage you guys that this is the time of year that some of the best lessons are gleaned. Like for instance, this is when you really need to take note. Did you plant too many cucumbers? Did you get overzealous in putting your garden in? What should you have planted more of? Are you tired of harvesting eight green beans a day and you really wish that you had put in a 40 foot row so you could actually get some meals out of it or enough to can? This is the time that it is really imperative to not just throw the towel in and leave the garden outside for a week at a time without looking at it. This is when you really learn what you need to do the next year and also we are coming up on time to really be thinking about the fall garden. And I know that's, it's crazy, like in the midst of the chaos of summer, the last thing you wanna do is plan another garden. But truly the fall garden is so much easier, it really is. I mean, it's just, it's much less labor intensive stuff. It's a lot of roots and leafy things. And 
then right now, if you accept that overwhelm and you think, oh, I just can't do this, I'm a bad gardener, you won't put that fall garden in. And the fall garden is really restful and productive and it is a really good investment for your time. And so I just wanted to tell you guys today, uh, don't give up. Don't, if, if your garden is, is waist high in weeds, you know, like figure out what you can do to get something out of it. And if you have come to a place of defeat in this season, like it's okay, there's no condemnation in that, but don't let that count you out for the fall, for instance, you know. Uh, I remember one year, my garden, it was about August and my garden had just gone to weed. And I had basically just been like, well, I'm calling it for this year. I'm done. I can't handle anything else. And I remember my mom coming over and being like, Jesse, you have peppers out there. She just, kind of, I hadn't even stepped foot in my garden in like a week because I was just like, I can't. It's too much. It's gotten away from me. There's just, there's no point anymore. It was, it's just too hard. I planted too much and I can't do it. And my mom came over and just with a fresh set of eyes on it, she was like, hey, there's harvest out there for you. And we grabbed my baskets and we went down into the garden and I remember coming back in and it was it was like all these peppers and the last tomatoes off of sick plants and you know a handful of eggplants off of plants that I thought weren't gonna produce anything that year and basically I had just stopped watching and when I had stopped watching and when I had stopped working the garden had not stopped producing and I remember just this pile of food on my table I took a picture of it and I was like wow this is what the garden did for me in her neglect. What would have happened had I just given it a little bit more effort? What would have happened had I just stuck with it a little bit? Maybe not with the fullness, maybe not being completely on top of it, maybe not, you know, everything that I had envisioned it be being, but what if I hadn't just thrown my hands up? If it gave me this much with nothing from me, what, what could it have done with a little bit of water and a little bit of care? And that's really just what I wanted to share with you guys because if I'm being honest, when I come out here and see all my dead squash plants, even going into the high tunnel and seeing a bunch of plants laid over again, you know, I have tied up those plants and tied up those plants and tied up those plants and they've just grown so fast. And I look at it and I'm like, okay, just keep showing up, just keep coming and doing something because what she'll produce in neglect is surprising and what she'll produce with just a little bit of my care and concern is totally worth my care and concern and being engaged now it's the hardest part I, you know the peak of the garden when the bugs are intense when the harvest is coming in this is the hardest part it's okay that it's hard um, it's okay that some things go bad but sticking through it, I promise you will be so proud of yourself if you will just stick through it and just keep showing up. So remember, work in the mornings and in the evenings when it's coolest, stay really, really hydrated and just do the best that you can. And I just wanna remind you that it wasn't that long ago that we were sitting with seed catalogs in our lap, bundled up in front of fireplaces, longing for the green to come back and the chorus of night sounds to come back and for the garden to grow again, for the harvest to be here. It wasn't that long ago that we were really wishing for right now. And was, although right now is hard, it won't be that long until it's over. But we can just stick with it a little while longer while it's hard. I'm here, I'm cheering you on. I'm showing up because I've been around through this cycle enough times to know that just a few short months from now, I'm gonna be looking back on this peak time going, Oh man, I wish I'd made more of it. Well guys, thank you for hanging out with me this evening. I think uh, a tomato sandwich is in order for me. I bless you, until next time.